I'm aware I've covered this topic before, but just look at what I look like. Look at how bad the video is. You know, it's, it's not great. Let's do this properly. Still by far and away, my most asked question every single day, about dozens of them every day, is Ellis, is this shirt real? Ellis, what do you think of this website? And it just, it's driving me insane and I can't possibly answer all of them. So this is the definitive video where we cover how to spot fake shirts. Hopefully I can help all of you. I really hope. It can be incredibly hard for those people who are new to buying football shirts to tell if a shirt is real or fake. I've been burnt myself several times in the past, although it's not hard to trick me. Look at me. It's also getting harder and harder to distinguish between a real and fake shirt. The fakes are getting quite good at making themselves seem real. So hopefully this video will help a few of you out and make this the definitive way to spot fake shirts. Two things before we get into this. Firstly, inevitably there's going to be some people watching this video who are about to realise some of the football shirts they have are fake. So apologies for that. And secondly, if you haven't subscribed yet, trying to hit 150,000 subscribers by the end of 2021. So please subscribe if you haven't. Please, please. Also like the video, apparently that helps. Right, so let's start with modern shirts. And it's actually quite easy to tell if modern shirts are real or fake. And this is thanks to one thing, product codes. So let's go through each manufacturer and show you how you can easily tell if your modern football shirt is real or fake. Let's start with Nike then. We've got an authentic PSG fourth shirt from last season and an easy way of telling it with any Nike shirt is to go underneath the shirt and you'll see this label here is the wash label and underneath it you'll see overlaid on screen there is some codes there and also sorry just a quick way to tell tale with a Nike shirt as well. If your shirt's a medium and you'll see on the code there there is an M probably going to be real but like it's not concrete but obviously the codes are, but a telltale sign is say the shirt was medium and that tag there says like XL, for example, it's definitely a fake. So as we can see, we've got our product codes overlaid on screen right now. If I Google image search Nike CV8409640, you can see what comes up on screen is images matching the PSG 4 shirt, which we have right here, which is a way of confirming that the shirt is definitively a real shirt. And this applies to every Nike shirt pretty much. Go underneath it, find the product codes, Google image it. If it checks out to be your shirt, then it's real. But I'll also show you now how you can tell if your shirt's fake. We've got the fake version of the same shirt here. Probably a good way to show just how simple it is. If we go underneath again, um, fake shirts, modern fakes especially, will tend to have product codes. Uh, this one doesn't. So once again, if your shirt has no product codes, it's definitely a fake, but I'll try and find a fake right now that still has the product code tag. So we've got this fake Nigeria home shirt from 2020 with the product codes underneath. So here we go. We'll show the product code that I have on screen right now. And straight away, a telltale sign from this that you can see overlaid already is the product code tag itself looks different. There's no size labeling there either, but we'll still Google image the codes anyway, just to try and see what comes up. So there we go, we've Google image the code that is on the shirt, which is Nike 72461400. And as you can see, the Google image results have returned a France shirt, which is obviously, you know, not the shirt we have. I find that a lot of fake shirt product codes return France shirts. I don't know why that is. Maybe they just managed to rip the codes from them and have just pasted them throughout. But yeah, so obviously this shirt is, is fake because the badge and the, the tick placement are really bad. But if you didn't know, it's because you can easily tell the product code. That's Nike covered, very simple. And once again, if any of your shirts from any manufacturer don't have a product code, it's safe to assume it's fake. It's better to assume than just buy it and hope. Next up, Adidas. Adidas can be a bit different because their product code placement is either up here underneath the shoulder or it can be placed lower. But usually in their most recent shirts, it is up higher underneath the shoulder. As you can see here, there is the product codes are uh, there. They'll be overlaid on screen, but yeah, they're underneath the left shoulder pad that you'd be wearing usually. And here we go. This is Red Stars Away shirt from 2020. And if you see, we Google the product code GL0865. Google Images returns images for the Red Star Away shirt from last season. So there we go. Another easy definitive way to check if a shirt's real. As I said with modern shirts, it is so simple. 
but it's different for each manufacturer a little bit. So hence why we're going to go through all of them. Once again, for argument's sake, we've got Juve's shirt from last season, which is a fake. We've got the product code you can see overlaid on screen once again. As you can see, again, the text looks different on it. The text looks more cheap. It's easier to define than it's fake. But we'll Google the code as well to show you what comes up. If you Google a fake Adidas product code, Adidas FI5295, and you'll see this time it returns images for a Columbia shirt, which you know, it's not a Columbia shirt. It's this, wherever you think of that from Juve. Disgusting! Next up is Puma. Puma are a tad different. They use something called a style number. It's essentially a product code. But here you can see we've got the very sought after Dortmund blackout shirt from last season. And the code can be found at the bottom of the shirt. So once again, similar to Nike, but the difference is with Puma, You'll see it is, I think it's more obvious what it is. Like you've got like this barcode thing here and you'll see on your tag, it says style number and then it will give you your number there. So let's Google image this code just to see what comes up. And if we Google image Puma 758537 you can see what comes up on screen is loads of images for the blackout shirt. So once again, confirmation that this shirt is genuine. I haven't actually got any fake Puma shirts to reference, but an example of once again to spot an easy fake is where the style number would be and the wash labels in a Puma shirt. This Dortmund shirt I have just has, there's nothing there. So once again, a telltale way of seeing is if there's no tags in there at all, steer well clear. Finally, I wanna talk about Kappa and I think Kappa make it the easiest of any manufacturer. They actually have their own website, which you can just Google the product codes on and it will let you know if your shirt is authentic or not. Linked in the description, and we'll head over there now and see whether this Monaco shirt we have is real or fake. So you want to head over to basiclabels.net. Then just like Nike and Puma, you will find your code where the wash labels are at the bottom of the shirt. And here you're looking for the serial number, as you'll see overlaid on screen. Our serial number for this Monaco shirt is 7556516444. And all you want to do is input your serial number into this website and press the search button. If it's genuine, this Kappa website will then return an image of your shirt on screen. So as you can see, once again, this Monaco shirt is genuine. Right, so modern shirts are done, and then we need to tackle retro shirts. The thing with retro shirts is it's more of a minefield. Uh, there's a reason why sites like Classic Football Shirts and more established sellers can charge the prices they do. It's because they have teams of people to tell if a shirt is genuine or fake. And with retro shirts, it can sometimes be hard, especially when there's wear to them and say so the product codes have worn out a bit. It's a bit more of a minefield. So for first time and new collectors, I have done videos in the past saying how you can start a football shirt collection and how to get the cheapest football shirts. They're the cheapest and I would say the methods I use the most to get football shirts. But if you're new to this and you don't really know how to tell, maybe buying from more reputable sellers anyway is the way you can stop yourself from buying fake shirts. But if you wanted to go alone, my main advice would be to check for wash labels. As I said, with the modern shirts, if there's no labels inside or they look suspicious, then it just, it just don't go for it. Just It's not worth the risk. Also compare images of the shirt you're about to buy to images on sites like classic football shirts. If you found an image of a shirt that looks great on say eBay, uh, does the shirt check out to one that would be listed on a reputable website. Does the pricing seem to check out okay? There's lots of telltale signs. Does the shirt look weirdly shiny? A lot of fake retro shirts have this weird shine to them, but also some genuine retro shirts are shiny. So <laughs> it's hard, but the wash labels are a really good way to go about it. Also the product sizing labels, for example, if it's an Adidas shirt and there's no Adidas sizing in there, it's just like the letter S, it's a fake. It's hard to say really. There's people out there who know way more about football shirts than me. So linked in the description is a link to a thread where people have shared tips and tricks to spot fake shirts. Shout out to the one person that put, I just watched one of your match worn messy shirt videos. <laughs> oh. But my biggest and best advice that I've always said, and I've said it so many times now, avoid websites that have every retro shirt or loads of retro shirts in stock 
for around £35. If they have multiple retro shirts in stock and you can get them in all kinds of sizes and they're all the same price and you can get personalization or customization on them or they're brand new with tags and they're all conveniently £35, they're fake, all right? Classic football shirts are the biggest retro shirt seller in the world and it's very rare they will have any retro shirt, they will not have that Schalke shirt in stock in more than one or two sizes. So if you find a site that has loads of that, for example, in stock, all the same price, all brand new with tags, <laughs> all different sizes, it's fake, all right? Instagram it applies to, it applies to websites. Loads of shady sellers are popping up more and more on Instagram now. Don't buy your football shirts directly from Instagram. I mean, obviously there are reputable sellers, don't, don't get me wrong, but if you're a new, new person buying shirts, don't get them directly from Instagram, I wouldn't say. It's hard to say. Don't kill me. Also, sites like eBay and Depop are absolute minefields. If a seller hasn't uploaded an image of the product code or the wash labels on a shirt, ask them to upload it. If they don't upload the codes or the wash labels of the shirt, don't buy it. They have to upload them. Just If they don't do it, then it's not worth your time and effort to buy it from them. One thing I will say about both Depop and eBay is they have buyer guarantee. So basically, if you buy a shirt and it does turn out to be fake, you're entitled to get your money back. Even if someone puts in the description of their listing, no refunds, if they've sold you a fake or counterfeit item, they've broken the law and you're well entitled to your refund. Don't be tricked by people that put no refunds or returns because they have to, by law, return your item. It's just how it is. So. I hope this has helped. I really hope the whole product code thing will now help people to tell if a shirt is real or fake or not. With retro shirts, it can be harder to tell, but usually if your gut's telling you something isn't real, probably best to avoid it. And also avoid any website that has multiple of any shirt in stock, basically, because it's not worth the time. And if they're all the same price, like a good example, sorry to reference classic football shirts again. They have different prices for the condition of the shirt because every retro shirt is going to be in a different condition. If a retro website is selling loads of the same shirt for the same price, it's because they're fakes. And that's it. That's how it is. Simple, easy, bosh. Bosh. I've been Ellis. Be sure to leave a like if you want to see more football shirt content. Usually we do some more, you know, some more fun content, but time from time you need to do these videos. We're coming up to Christmas. We're coming up to a new year now as well. So making sure that people are getting the right shirts and the shirts they're getting are genuine, I think is massive at this time of year. So I've been Alice. Thanks for watching. Ciao, ciao. Bye.